Good morning, everybody. I am Mikko Hyppönen, and we are going to speak about the arms race. Because we are in the middle of an arms race. In fact, we are in the middle of multiple different kinds of an arms race when we think about our security, our online security, and our computer security. I've worked with computer security forever, and we computer security people, we used to think that our job was to secure computers. Well, our job is not to secure computers. Yes, it used to be that, but today when you look around, well, the lights are on in this building because of computers and software. The lunch you're going to have later today was partially manufactured in a food processing plant, controlled by computers and software. Water is coming out of the taps here because of computers and software. So we, computer security people, you, computer security people, we have to realize that we are no longer securing computers. We are securing the society. And this arms race is going on between the attackers and defenders. And it's also going between different kinds of attackers. One clear example is the kind of arms race in which governments are right now. Because multiple different parts of governments are actively involved in creating offensive cyber attack capability. It's being developed by law enforcement agencies, which today use malware to do legal investigations. It's being developed by intelligence agencies. It's being developed by surveillance agencies. And it's being developed by the different militaries. So very interesting times. In many ways, scary times. But at the very same time, exciting times. I guess we're all lucky to be alive during these defining years, during these decades when the internet came around and brought us so much good, so much new opportunities, but of course also new kinds of risks. And it's mind-boggling to think about the amount of devices that are online. Now, there are 7 billion people on this planet 7 billion people, and over the last decades, around 1.5 billion PC computers have been sold. That's a lot of computing power. However, that's nothing when you compare it to what happened last year. Because last year, we had 1.5 billion iPhone and Android smartphones sold in one year. It took decades to sell one and a half billion PCs. And we sold the same amount of smartphones last year. And even that is going to pale in comparison to what's to come. To what's to come with, yes, with the Internet of Things, with the Internet of Everything, and with the industrial control systems around us. Now, the risks that face us are mostly coming from online criminals, the attackers who do their attacks, to make money. Why? Because money is a good motivator. But over the last 12 months, we've seen several attacks which have been surprising. Surprising because of their motives and because of the kind of attacks we saw. For example, last December, we saw the attacks against Sony Pictures. So when Sony Pictures employees came to work one day in late December last year, they saw that their intranet looked like this. And here the attacker wasn't a criminal attacker who was trying to make money with their attacks. This attack was indeed linked to nation state attackers and linked, of all things, to a movie. In a little bit similar fashion, we saw uh, two and a half months ago the Ashley Madison leak, which is once again interesting because of the motives of the attackers. We all know the case. Ashley Madison is a cheating website. And then someone breached their security, stole their customer database, and demanded that this company must stop all operations or the attacker will leak the customer database, including customers' names, email addresses, and their sexual preferences. And since Ashley Madison, the company, did not follow these orders, the attacker did exactly what he threatened and leaked 
this database. Who was the attacker? Well, we don't know. The most prevalent theory is that he or she was someone who was cheated upon through this service. And he or she was looking for revenge for his or her relationship getting wrecked by a cheating website. And of course, many sad stories have come out of this leak. Lives have most likely been destroyed by this leak. There are many people among these 36 and a half uh, million accounts that were leaked that were listed there without actually being real users on this site at all. For example, there's this one lady who was a user on Ashley Madison. Her name and her email address is there in the database. And since the database is now public, her work colleagues and her neighbors have all heard about this. The rumors start going out really quickly. And indeed, she was a user on Ashley Madison, but she wasn't there to cheat on her husband. Exactly quite the contrary. The reason why she set up an account on Ashley Madison around three years ago was that she was suspecting of her husband, that her husband would be cheating on her through Ashley Madison. So she went to the site and she set up an account to try to find her husband from the site, which she never did. Most likely, if the husband was there, she, he was using a fake name and fake email address. And now that the information became public, people are now looking at her, thinking that she's the cheater when the situation is, is exactly the opposite. So what's the lesson here? Well, I guess the lesson is don't jump to conclusions. So big companies are getting hacked left and right. The largest companies on the planet are getting hacked. In fact, if you think about Fortune 500, how many of the Fortune 500 are hacked right now? Well, the answer is 500. Every single one of them has a breach in their network right now. It might be a small breach, it might be a big breach, but every single one of them is hacked at this very moment. Because the situation regarding our computer security has become so bad that if you have a large enough network, and all these companies have a large network, you will not be able to defend every single part of your network. So we have to start thinking about security differently. We have to start thinking about layered security. Layers where, when individual layers fail, the combined security of our network will still stand strong. That's what we have to do. Then we have also new kinds of attackers. Extremists and terrorist groups which actually have capability of doing offensive operations online worry me greatly. And the main reason why they worry me is not their technical capability, because that's not really very high yet. But what worries me is that these guys would be willing to do the kinds of attacks that no other attacker group would be willing to do. These guys are willing to do attacks which make no sense. And that's why we should be fighting them. We should be fighting them, of course, in the real world, but also in the online world. And I was really interested to find out three weeks ago about what the government of Canada is doing. Now, one thing you always notice when you look at pictures of the Islamic State is that they're always on the road with their Toyota pickup trucks. Every single time, it's the same kind of car. So, government of Canada issued a public tender three weeks ago where they're asking for security companies to provide them with capability of remotely breaching the security of vehicles, in particular, security of cars, in particular, security of 2015 light-duty pickup trucks. They will not name the make and model of the cars they want to remotely hack, but I can guarantee to you they're interested in hacking Toyota pickup trucks. And this is interesting. This is sort of like thinking out of the box. And car hacks, of course, are a thing which has been in the headlines throughout the year. 
And it will be in the headlines in the future as well. One of the reasons why it will be such a big topic is indeed self-driving cars and artificial intelligence. And I'll tell you that I can't wait for self-driving cars to become a reality. Because when self-driving cars become a reality, our traffic will change. We've all done enough of sitting in traffic jams. But when cars drive themselves, our traffic will look different. It starts to look like this. It will be optimized. Optimized to the level that people can walk to the streets knowing that the vehicles will not hit them. The vehicles will not hit each other. And I'll tell you, I can't wait for the traffic of Helsinki to look like this. I mean, that's what we need. That's the future. Optimized autonomous vehicles. The internet of everything. Now, this isn't real, unfortunately, yet, but it will be. And of course, it will also bring new security challenges. But this is clearly a trade-off worth doing. And everything is indeed getting online. Now, we in F-Secure, we actually have a, uh, a system called Riddler through which we can scan the IP ranges of the whole internet and look for devices which are online. And we keep finding stuff that's online available to anybody, which clearly shouldn't be online and available to anybody. Like this here. This is a home automation system of somebody, I think, yeah, when, in Germany. And I don't think he understands that his configuration is built so that he's actually exposing his whole house to everybody with no password, which means I can go there and change the lights and turn off the alarm system, which is a bad idea. You don't want me controlling your house. Yet, this is available publicly online. Or security cameras online. You don't want me looking at your bedroom. You just don't want that. That's a bad idea. Yet, these are online publicly right now with no password. Or even things like these. It's a goddamn curtains. Goddamn Internet of Thing curtains where you can remotely open and close curtains. I'll tell you, the Internet of Things isn't something which is in the future when we already have curtains online today. Or a house irrigation system, which I can remotely control. You don't want me controlling your irrigation system. And even things like household gadgets, like IoT kettles. This is a water boiler called iKettle. And the thing about all these things, all these internal things, is that many of them have been built by the cheapest manufacturer with security as an afterthought. Because cybersecurity is not a selling point for a kettle. And the attacks that we see going through these devices are not about hacking a kettle. Because the kettle is not interesting. What is interesting is that this device, this particular device, has a vulnerability which can be used to attack the device to steal the password to a private network. So if you have an employee in your organization who has brought one of these to your office and connected it to your office Wi-Fi, now the attackers can gain access to your office Wi-Fi and to your internal network. The target of the attack is not the kettle. The kettle is a vector for the attackers to get where they want to go. And we have no solu solutions for these problems. Like, how do you solve this? How do you solve the security of Internet of Things? Obviously, we can't run a security software on a kettle or in an irrigation system or a smart light bulb. Nobody has a good answer for this. Nobody until yesterday. Because yesterday, we launched something that will finally make the horrible glorious future of Internet of Things go away. As Scott Hanselman from Microsoft said, the glorious future of Internet of Things is a two-hour firmware update for the light bulbs in my house. And I couldn't find a royalty-free photo of Scott Hanselman, so I put in a photo of Kekkonen instead. <laughs> so what did we launch yesterday? Well, this.
Ladies and gentlemen, that is F-Secure Sense. It's the first hardware product from F-Secure. It's a device you put in your house, and it will replace your existing solutions. You no longer have to run an antivirus on your Windows computers or Mac computers or on your Android phones or your iPhones. And it will also secure your smart TV, your PlayStation, your Xbox, your smart light bulbs, the devices in your house. It will also secure the devices you take with you, like your laptops and your phones. It's a super fast Wi-Fi hotspot which builds a secure Wi-Fi network for your house. And it's the first solution of its kind. And these are the kinds of solutions we need to be thinking about if we indeed want to survive in this arms race. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank